Okay, new god, we got an important lesson today. Your second lesson is shipbuilding. Now, watch closely, as this took me years of practice, and I want you to learn it within a week. You want me to learn it in a week? Stop complaining, and concentrate. How's it look? Yeah, great, but how am I supposed to learn? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's head out there and give it a spin. A few moments later. Uh, are you sure this is safe? Yeah, it's fine. Chill out. Hey, what up boys? Today we're continuing our detailed breakdown of all the crafting artisan skills available in Ashes of Creation and comparing them with similar skills in our currently popular MMOs. Today's subject is carpentry, shipbuilding and siege weaponry. Quite a lot to go over today, but before we start, if you're discovering my channel through this video, here's a link to my complete artisan overview, which will help you understand the basic concept of artisan skills for Ashes of Creation in less than 13 minutes. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin. So, what is woodworking generally in MMOs? Well, it's not often we get crafting professions purely around woodworking in an MMO, but when it is there, it's usually centered around using processed lumber from gathering trees and creating certain wooden-based objects. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> No shit. However, Ashes of Creation is branching the use of lumber into two or possibly three avenues of crafting. General carpentry, which is the creation of furniture and certain crafting stations for other artisan skills. The other is shipbuilding and the crafting of certain ship parts for upgrading your actual ship. And lastly, the one which I remain skeptical that it is exclusively carpentry, as it may dabble into some blacksmithing materials too. The creation of siege weapons. Weaponry. I'm excited to get on because today, for once, is an episode that doesn't actually involve World of Warcraft. You son of a bitch. In Ashes of Creation, carpentry involves mainly just decoration and functional furniture within your homes and freeholds. This means we should be getting two avenues of specialization available for carpentry itself. The actual aesthetic side of things, crafting very unique looking decorations for people to use and make the house look as dapper as they like, which will probably be one of the lesser chosen specializations as these decorations will not provide anything outside of the actual look they have. These will include statues, paintings, tables, chairs, vases, you know, that kind of thing. However, there is an option for you to choose when purchasing your house to have it prefurbished, which is a little weird, but I already have a video detailing all the housing systems up here in the top corner. Take care when watching this one, as it's one of my first videos ever, and uh, it's a literal garbage. What a joker. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online, Black Desert Online, and Final Fantasy XIV are the three games that stand out to me as games with really well-designed housing systems, and I really hope Intrepid have taken a good look at how these three games work mechanically with placing decorations, especially in Elder Scrolls Online, as they have pretty much nailed it to perfection. These decorations are another cosmetic avenue that has been watered down by the existence of the cosmetic store. But if I'm honest, I really don't see buying cool decorations and furniture as a problem because the cosmetic store only really affects cosmetic progression from the silhouette of a character in the form of mounts and armors, which is a really bad thing for an MMO. The decor for houses though, uh, it's honestly not a problem. The other side of the carpentry tree is the crafting of certain functional furniture that will have some actual use in one way or another, be it stoves for cooking, workbenches for carpentry itself, or another functional piece of furniture that will provide some sort of temporary buff. Beds, hearths, chairs, trophies, all those kind of things. The higher your carpentry skill, the better quality furniture you can make. 
This kind of functional furniture exists in Black Desert Online, as we discussed in the crafting overview video during the crafting station segment. But it also extends its buffs to certain Bosch trophies and furniture, like beds. As these offer some functionality to your character, and owning them within your house is just mandatory if you want to have an advantage over your peers. The trophies, for example, have a certain number of uses to them, and once they're interacted with, they give your character a buff for an hour or two. This isn't used that often, as the buffs it provides are not worth the travel time. However, the beds allow your character to regenerate your energy faster whilst you're laying in it, opening more AFK time management for the players. Whether Intrepid take this route or not, it's currently unknown. So for now, let's move on. Now, the next branch of woodworking within Ashes of Creation is the shipbuilding, as the primary resource required to craft these ships is going to be wood. No shit. Hey, we already did that joke during this video. <laughs> Talk to the hand. Alright, chill out. To begin your shipbuilding adventures, you're required to have two things. The materials needed to make the boat of your dreams, and a special crafting station located at a coastal node. These crafting stations, which are labelled as harbour crafting stations quite rightly, are unlocked as the coastal node progresses, so it's likely boats will not be available until the node has progressed to at least level 3, the village stage. Don't quote me on that though. There's only a couple of games out there currently that have really fleshed out their naval content, and if you're looking for more information on that, I covered it in my ocean content video up here in the top corner. However, I'll go over again how the shipbuilding mechanics work for the other MMOs for this video just to save you guys a click. In Black Desert Online, certain buildings within harbour towns have the special function to craft boats at. There are two types of ships you can progress in BDO, a trading ship, which is focused around making money through bartering goods between islands, and a combat ship, which is focused around hunting sea monsters. These two ships have a progression to them, leveling up the basic ship to a tier 2 and finally into a Karak version. This final version actually branches out into two ships again, specialising more in precise fields such as cannon count or maximum speed. The system is fairly well done and hopefully Intrepid have taken the time to see how it functions in BDO and build upon it for Ashes of Creation. Arcage is also a game that features a lot of sea content for boats, however, I haven't personally played that game at all, so let me know in the comment section below if the systems in Arcage could benefit Ashes of Creation too. Finally, a second avenue for specialisation within the shipbuilding in Ashes could also be the creation of the actual equipment itself on the ships, such as the mast, the hull, and the cannons. This would open up separate markets for the very high-end creation of the ship types and the equipment that goes on them. The more diverse the specialisations are, the more unique the items made at the master level tier are going to be. So the final section in today's video is going to be all about siege weaponry. Siege weapons are not usually made through crafting professions in our currently popular MMOs, so Ashes of Creation is unique in that aspect. I can see PvP guilds recruiting master crafters specialised in the field of siege weaponry to keep their arsenal of siege weapons up to date against other guilds. We may even end up seeing more really unique siege weaponry, which is only available to craft through carpenters that have mastered the siege weaponry tree. I'd really like to see unique siege equipment made by carpenters, such as the siege tower, which was used in the 9th century, but I get a feeling that's just going to be a pipe dream. Aside from that one, the typical siege weaponry will likely be catapults, ballista, and trebuchets. One last shill before moving on, I have a whole series on PvP on the channel, so I've linked that playlist for you up here if you're interested in the more PvP side of Ashes of Creation. The only two games I've played that use siege equipment really are Guild Wars 2 and Black Desert Online. In Guild Wars 2, the siege equipment is brought from a vendor and placed down in the world as a buildable structure. Players are then required to spend their supply to build these siege weapons up, ready for use. For them to actually be functional, you need to channel on them for 10 or so seconds, and during that time, your supply is used up gradually, and added towards the progress of the building. This mechanic is very well balanced as it requires coordination and haste in order to set up certain choke points during Guild Wars 2's open PvP game mode, World vs World. 
We currently have no idea how the mechanics of siege equipment will work in Ashes of Creation, so I'll move on to Black Desert Online as their siege equipment works in a much less dynamic way. In BDO, the siege equipment is placed before the battle begins, requiring the attacking and defending teams to have a certain amount of foresight depending on who they are up against. This is a much different dynamic to Guild Wars 2's more fast-paced repositioning and go-again method as it tends to favour the defenders more than the attackers, which is something Steven and the team have openly said they are going to do. However, BDO does feature the Siege Tower, which is absent in Guild Wars 2, and it really makes for some spectacle and a sense of epicness when you're attacking a castle in BDO. Both of the systems work really well for different reasons, and I'm excited to see which one Intrepid choose to go with. And that's pretty much all I got for the carpentry and woodwork in Ashes of Creation. Next up, we'll be tackling my personal favourite, the cooking. I want to thank the guys who commented on the last video. You're the best, and I appreciate you a lot. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.